Today we are looking at the Pentium 3 EB that launched in October of 1999 for a hefty price of $455. The letter E tells us that this processor is based on the newer Coppermine core produced in the smaller and more efficient 180 nanometer process and comes in the socket 370 form factor. The letter B is all about a boosted frontside bus, which increases from the traditional 100 MHz to 133 MHz. Now that sounds all pretty straightforward, but there's a lot more to talk about. Let's begin this video by looking at the slot 1 system. There are many motherboards with various chipsets, but by far the best one is the Intel 440BX. This chipset is rock solid, fast, great for overclocking and so good that it is used as a reference in many emulators or virtual machines. Competition between Intel and AMD was fierce. Price drops happened every quarter and for the PC enthusiasts we got some lovely Intel Celeron CPUs that could be overclocked into something that could compete with Intel's most expensive processors. While Intel had large parts of the market for themselves as they launched the Slot 1 platform and the Pentium 2 without much competition, it didn't take long and AMD had a competitive product with the Athlon and Duron processors. Despite using some unethical business practices, Intel really had to come up with something new and that was raising the frontside bus from 100 to 133 MHz. And this is where it gets interesting. You see the Slot 1 platform was so good that Intel had to come up with a platform that was even better. However, Intel teamed up with Rambus, a company that designed a proprietary SD-RAM technology called RDRAM. While this is really for another video, RDRAM had high latency, ran hot and cost an absolute fortune. With most gamers in their teenage years being strapped for cash, many chose to just stick with their slot 1 systems and use slot cat adapters that lets you use socket 370 CPUs and of course overclock it. I'm yet to play around with 133 MHz overclocking with the 440BX chipset but the common consensus is that it was really fast and matched and usually outperformed the systems with official 133 MHz support. This was also a time when chipsets from VIA or SIS became real alternatives, for example the VIA Apollo Pro. They just kept using the good old SD-RAM memory and later some motherboards even supported DDR memory. Now personally, I missed out on all this fun. For around 5 years I took a break from computing, I traveled a lot and did all the usual things you do when you're young and free. So guys, I'm super excited to catch up on all of this and I hope that you also find it interesting and if you have any interesting stories to tell from this time, please share them down below in the comments, I always enjoy reading them. So the Pentium 3 600 EB has a 133 MHz frontside bus, 4.5x multiplier which gives it a 600 MHz clock speed. It is based on the Coppermine core produced in 180 nanometer process and has 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. It supports the SSE extraction set and it has 1.6 volt of V core and a TDP of only 15.8 watts. As retro PC gamers we have the awesome luxury to avoid all the drama and we can use the Intel 815 chipset that could be found on motherboards at around mid 2000. This chipset has official support for the 133 MHz frontside bus and it is really the proper successor to the Intel 440PX. It also supports PC 133 memory, AGP 4X and comes with faster IDE storage controllers. From my experience testing a few motherboards, it is a very solid platform for retro gaming. A little bit overlooked and in the shadow of the slot 1 builds that are floating around, but well worth checking out. One downside however is that the 815 chipset motherboards don't usually come with ISA slots, as far as I know, and it doesn't support more than 512 megabytes of RAM. I think it's time to take this Pentium 3 600EB and run it through our range of benchmarks. I didn't have a 100 MHz and 133 MHz frontside bus Pentium 3 with the exact same clock speed. So for this comparison we've got the Pentium 3 500 and 700 with 100 MHz frontside bus as well as the AMD Duron 600 and Athlon 700. Let's quickly go over the specifications of the test system. We've got the Dell version of the Intel 
D815WEA with 512 megabytes of RAM and for AMD we've got the Xbox K7 V600 with 1 gigabyte of DDR memory. We're using the G-Cube Radeon 9600 XT with 256 megabytes of video RAM and for the sound a Creative Labs Sound Blaster Audi G2 ZS. For storage we're using a Seagate Barracuda 5 with 120 gigabytes and also an ID DVD ROM drive. For operating system we're using Windows XP Service Pack 1. So looking at the performance, the Pentium 3 600EB with the higher front side bus is able to catch the 700E model quite easily, in some benchmarks even outperforming it. The power draw results are very interesting and show just how efficient the Pentium 3 platform really is. The Athlon 700 system for example pulls more power when idle than the Pentium 3 systems under load. It will be very interesting to see how this develops with faster processors. Now the Athlon 700 system however is quite a bit faster but do keep in mind that we are running it on a modern motherboard with DDR memory. Next up we have some GTA 3 gameplay on this machine. I had to upgrade Windows to Service Pack 3 in order for Steam to work properly but here it is, let's see what this machine can do. right here let's get off the street and find a change of clothes so let's summarize it the 133 megahertz fsb makes a real difference with the pentium 600 eb matching the 700 e there's a wide range of supporting motherboards most notable are the via apollo pro and the intel 815 chipsets personally i would recommend going with intel here for really good compatibility and stability. However, if you go with Vaya, you can use more memory and often get an ISA slot as well. And that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe, like, dislike, share the video and leave me some comments down below, especially if you have something interesting to talk about from 1999 and 2000. What system did you use? How did you see the whole thing with Rambus and Intel and did you stay with slot one? Did you upgrade? to um, a motherboard that has a non-Intel chipset or did you switch over to AMD? So really eager to hear what you did back in those days. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with another video.